Today we're going to tie up a very simple fly, which will be a nice change of pace from the fly we did this last week. Uh, if you didn't look at that yet, please take a look at the Morlock Gobi. It's a very long video, so be prepared to sit down for a while and tune in to that one. But this one, fortunately, is not going to be as long and is much more straightforward, and in no time you can have a whole box full of these. This is the Dave Whitlock's Red Fox Squirrel Hair Nymph. I generally refer to it as a red fox squirrel nymph. Uh, it is an excellent trout nymph, and it is what is considered kind of a general purpose imitation nymph. It doesn't imitate any specific insect like a mayfly or a stonefly or caddis or something like that, but it can mimic a number of different uh, aquatic insects that trout feed on. If I'm going to go trout fishing anywhere and consider that I'm going to be doing some nymphing, I definitely have some of these. I put these up on the same level as a gold ribs hare's ear or a pheasant tail nymph. You've got to have some of these in your box. It's a very simple fly to tie. We're going to be using um, some pre-made dubbing, but I'll explain to you how the abdomen and the thorax dubbing was originally made. So if you want to, you can go ahead and make some of your own. All in all, it's a simple little fly to tie, and it's kind of fun to crank out a dozen of them, and we'll get started. Start with our red fox squirrel hair nymph. We're going to put our hook in the vise. This is a TMCO 5262 hook. It's just a 2X long streamer hook. You could use a 2X long nymph hook or something like that if you want. This is a number 12. It's kind of middle of the road. You tie these on anything from a size 2 on down to a size 20, but I find that a number 12 to 14 is an excellent trout nymph. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put our lead on the hook shank here. This is a .015 lead. You could use something smaller if you want, a little bit lighter weight or a little heavier. Dave Whitlock in his instructions simply states use a lead wire that's going to be about the same diameter as the uh, wire in the hook. The nice thing about that is if your hook size goes up because you're tying on a larger hook or it goes down because you're tying on a smaller one, then your lead uh, diameter is going to um, also go up or go down with it. And that keeps you from having to remember to use, say, a .025 or something on a size 6 hook and, you know, .01 on a size 16 hook and so on. Anyway, we're going to wrap our lead, attach it to the hook shank, and I'm going to put in 12 wraps of lead. You could use more, you could use less, that's up to you. I like to just put in about 12, that seems to actually cover it pretty good. Some people will even tie these with a bead on the front of them. And some people will also put another layer of lead right up on top towards the front here, which aids in the, the overall taper to the front of the hook. Dave Whitlock also calls for, <clears throat> in his instructions to put the lead right in the center of the hook shank. I prefer to have it just a little bit forward. I'm going to take my thread and attach it to the hook here. I'm simply using a uni thread. This is an 8 aught uni thread in an orange. And orange is for the preferred uh, thread color for this. You could use a black if you want. But when we're finished, we'll have a pronounced orange head on this, which aids in the attraction of the fly. Attach my thread a little bit behind the eye of the hook and advance it down so I'm a good eye length behind the eye of the hook here. Moving my lead wraps down to the, where the thread is at here and then gently going to reach back over the lead and pull it down towards the thread wraps in the front here anchoring it in. At this point I'm going to put a little bit of a thread dam on the back and on the front. I do not have to cover up. This is a lead free. It's not a, a actual genuine lead. I do not have to cover that up with thread wraps but I do want to have a thread dam in the front and in the back. The thread dam accomplishes two things for us. Primarily, it locks in that lead along the hook shank right where we want it. So I don't have to worry as I'm wrapping in other materials that that's going to shove 
that led to a different position on the hook shank. The other thing is, is the thread dams give us a nice transition. Having this nice taper back here, I don't have a pronounced ledge at the back or the front of the lead, so when I'm tying in materials, I don't have to worry about it maybe falling off the front of that. I have a nice taper, and it's much easier and more consistent to tie the fly. I'll remove my excess thread, and now I'm going to tie in the tail. The tail that we're tying in is actually from the back of a red fox squirrel skin. You'll notice that the hairs back here have a lot of under fur, and it's a dark under fur at the base with a tan stripe or tan barring of, of under fur right there before it gets into the guard hairs, which have a pronounced uh, white tip on the ends of the black guard hairs. When we are going to tie this in, we're going to cut a clump out and sort <clears throat> separate out just a few fibers, but I want to leave the under fur inside the hair. I'm going to tie that in. <clears throat> so I clip out a chunk of the hair from the hide, and I don't need this much. I actually need about half of this because all I want is to have about a half dozen or so of the long guard hairs inside the tail. But I want to be careful that I don't mess this up too much in my fingers because I want the under fur to be in here. I'm going to tie this in right where the transition between the dark gray and the tan under fur is. I can pull out a few of the longer or stray guard hairs if I want or even thin that out just a little bit here. And I'm going to trim some of this gray under fur off so that when I tie this forward right here, it will actually won't bunch up on top of the lead and it'll give me a little bit smoother body back here. Again, I'm going to tie that in. I'm going to use a pinch wrap right here just to tie that in right at the transition between the gray under fur and the tan. A couple of wraps backwards to make that make sure it's down at the end of the shank. Then I'm going to wrap forward with touching turns just to bind down the rest of that those tail fibers and under fur and you'll notice it just helps to smooth the back end of that body out just a little bit I don't end up with a, a lump or anything up there but that's basically just a, a very sparse tail at this point I'm going to tie in my rib material which is a gold oval tinsel I'm using a number 18 on this fly if I were tying this a, a larger size hook say uh, 8 I might be using a size 14. If I was going a little bit smaller, I would stick with the 18. And then if I went into, say, a size 16, I'd probably switch to a gold wire. The rib in this is not to provide a segmentation of the fly as much as to give it a little bit of color underneath because our dubbing is going to be somewhat translucent in the water. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and dub the abdomen on here. The abdomen... <clears throat> is made, uh, Mr. Whitlock originally cut out the orange light belly, fair, uh, belly, fair, uh, belly hair from the red fox squirrel and blended that with some synthetic fibers, basically coming up with his own version of SLF. And Wapsie actually makes this and packages it now, um, the Dave Whitlock uh, SLF. And there's a whole list of different blends that he has. The nice thing is, is the very first two are the red fox uh, squirrel abdomen and the thorax. So you can get these pretty much wherever Wapsie products are sold. If you want, you can blend some of your own by taking some of the, the light belly um, hairs and say some uh, orange um, ice dub or something like that and mixing it together. For our abdomen here, I'm just going to make a sparse two, two and a half inch dubbing noodle here. I want it to be very, very sparse on this end right here towards the hook because then when I wrap that in, I get a nice taper coming off the back of the tail as I want, as I move forward on the abdomen because I want this to taper forward as I get up to about the two-thirds spot on the hook shank. 
So I'll start wrapping around, just keeping it right at the base here until that dubbing noodle starts to contact, and then I'll start wrapping forward, trying to keep that nice and narrow, and then slowly making that a little bit bigger and a little bit fatter as I work up to that two-thirds spot. As you can see, I've gotten up to it here, and I don't want this too pronounced up here. I have too much dubbing, so I'll just go ahead and remove that from the thread right here and just wrap that last remaining bit in right there. Don't worry if this is a little shaggy or even a little bit fat. I think a, uh, a fat nymph might even be a more attractive nymph to a trout. At this point, we're going to palmer in our rib. I'm just going to put in five turns of the oval gold tinsel. You can do four, you can do five. It depends on the size of the hook that you've got. Um, again, this is not there for it to aid in a segmented look as much as in a little bit of contrast with that dubbing. I'll tie that in. You'll notice that where I'm tying this in and up at the two-thirds spot or a little forward of that right here, I'm actually into the area that's going to be my thorax. And that's fine. I'm going to tie in or uh, make a dubbing noodle of my thorax uh, dubbing here in a second. And when I put that in, I want to make certain I leave at least an eye length right behind the eye of the hook for the head. I'll explain that in just a minute. So I don't have to put a whole lot of dubbing on here because I'm essentially just covering up what I already have here and keeping that taper going forward a little bit. My dubbing is a, uh, the thorax dubbing is a combination of the back hairs and even the guard hairs all mixed together with some synthetic fibers, again, some ice dub or something like that um, to basically make an SLF, a synthetic living fiber. Um, and, and as I said, the um, Wapsie makes it in, you have the thorax, which is number one, and the abdomen, which is number two, so you can get it pre-made. I just find this is a little easier. As I mentioned before, this is going to be a very sparse, maybe one to one and a half inch dubbing noodle. I don't need a lot because all I'm doing is, you know, it's already bulked up with the lead underneath here and then some of the abdomen dubbing right there. All I really need to do is just cover that up just a little bit with these darker fibers and make a little bit more of a pronounced thorax section. There we go. You have some of these hairs sticking out, that's fine. You can even use a dubbing brush at this point on the thorax to pick out some of those hairs if you want. I generally don't because what I find is when I'm fishing this fly, a lot of this is all going to start falling out and coming out anyway. So it will look buggier the more you fish it. I'm going to tidy this up right behind the eye of the hook in front of that dubbing so that I have a nice level area for tying in my hackle. The hackle that I'm using on this is a Hungarian partridge. I'm using one of the gray feathers from the back of the partridge. You could certainly use one of the browner or darker feathers that are from the shoulders of the partridge. It's up to you. The key here is, is that the fibers that we are getting and tying in on this feather, the fibers being the barbs right here, the length of these is only going to be about a gap to a gap and a half of the hook shank. I don't need real long ones and I don't want real short ones. Plus the fact I'm only putting in um, two wraps of this hackle but on some a smaller say a size 14 or size 16 and 18 I'm only putting in one wrap of this hackle because I just want just very 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 sparse legs on this. I'm not wanting to make a real real buggy collar. I'm just wanting to put in a few fibers that are going to simulate legs. Once I isolate the tip and stroke the other fibers back, I'm going to cut the tip here so that I have just a small triangle like this. And that triangle is what I'm going to tie in 
right in front of that dubbing and then lash that all the way down to the eye of the hook, clean that up a little bit. And then I'm going to palmer this around. Like I said, I'm just going to palmer this two times. Because I'm just looking for just a few of these barbs to represent my legs. If this were very dense, I might even only do this about one and a half times. But I don't mind in the size 12 if it looks just a little bit buggier. I'm going to stroke all of this back, and now I'm going to create the head of the fly. The head of the fly is going to fill up this area about an eye length behind the eye of the hook, and I don't necessarily want to make it real fat as much as I want to make it a little bit longer and more pronounced. Once the head's made, I'll put in a, a four or five turn whip finish just to finish off the thread. Cut that off. You could clean a little bit of this up, the, anything that's sticking out over the front, but I don't think it really matters. This stem piece right here, if it's too short to grab a hold of to pop off of there, you can always Take a small set of pliers, reach in and grab it down at the base, and just pop it right out. And see that gives me a nice collar. It's got a number of fibers in there. If I want, I can cut some of those out or pull, pull some of those out to thin that out a little bit. But for the most part, that's a, a nice, decent collar for a size 12. I'm going to go ahead and put in half a drop of head cement on the top and the bottom of that. Let that soak in real well. And that is my Dave Whitlock Red Fox Squirrel Hair Nymph. So thanks for joining me today. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button down below and consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell if you'd like to get notified every week when we put out a new video. If you have any questions or comments about this fly, please include them down below and I'll be happy to get back to you and answer any questions that you have. Consider sharing this video and any of the other videos here at Dressed Irons with any of your friends, anybody else you might think be interested in any of these. And I'll also be interested to hear some feedback and some suggestions for future videos. Until then, remember it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong.